वॉज द नंबर वन मोस्ट पावरफुल मोस्ट फेमस क्रिश्चियन टेली इवेंजलिस्ट जस्ट अ फ्यू वीक्स बिफोर इज डिबेट वन ऑफ द फैंस ऑफ शेख दीदा टोल्ड इन लेट शेख अहमद दीदा आई एम योर फैन बट आई वॉन्ट गिव यू एन एडवाइज Baby, you can call me a superman. Cho 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 cha cha gani ta kupa ma. Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's your boy Jesse Keegan and your girlfriend Ilugo, and we are Funny Fun Jesse. So right about now, we're gonna do another reaction, and this one right here was suggested by a lot of people. So without any wasting time, guys, we're gonna react to Who Is Ahmed the Dad by Zakir Naik. And yeah, finally we get to, you know, to know probably more, or maybe somebody talking to find out probably. Uh, about Ahmed Dad. So, without any further ado, guys, let's get it. Let me give you another example to compare and show the difference between goal setting. I would like to give an example of the man, of the person who had very small means but reached the heights in his field. The man, the person. who changed my life and converted me from a doctor of a body to a doctor of soul and i'm sure you know the name of, of that man his man other than sheik ahmed tida let us compare his goal setting sheik ahmed tida and if you know the life history of sheik ahmed tida he was only he acquired education only to the standard 6 because both his ends could not meet he was forced to leave his education after passing standard 6 he was forced to leave his education a man with small means he was forced to leave the country india where he was born then he goes to south africa he does a job of a salesman he works in a furniture shop he does a job of driving etc and while he was in south africa he used to constantly be harassed by the christian missionaries who used to tell islam is a useless religion it is merciless they used to attack islam and because he used to get harassed a desire came in his heart that i born to reply all the allegations against islam made by this christian missionary i want to give a fitting reply to these christian missionary imagine a man only study to standard 6 but naturally he had faith in allah he tried he stumbled across a book you know the books which were lying in a room which had dust on it he stumbled across a book by the name of izar ul haq the truth revealed by maulana karani rahmatullah karani and he gets the direction for his goal that's how he started and he tried for 40 years till the time he challenged the stalwarts of christianity imagine a sixth standard pass man strike for 40 years and challenge the stalwarts of the world so much so that in 1984 in the early 1980 he was about to debate reverend jimmy swagat and at that time in 1980 jimmy swagat was the number one most powerful most famous christian tele evangelist just a few weeks before the debate one of the fans of sheikh dida told him let sheikh ahmed dida i am your fan but i want to give you an advice this man jimmy sagat i know him i have studied him please don't debate him he will chew you and he will spit you out 
Imagine a fan of Didas giving advice to Didas. You don't debate this Jimmy Swagger. You don't know him, I know him. He will chew you and he will spit you out. The person who was the most famous televangelist, who owned television channels, whose budget was more than a million dollars a day to keep his head above water. Our Sheikh Ahmad Didas, MashaAllah. With Allah on his side, he goes to USA in the hometown of the Christian mission, in the country where he's famous. He goes and he has a debate. And Alhamdulillah, Summa Alhamdulillah, with Allah's help, he turns the tables over. Imagine a man of small means, not even past school, leave aside being a graduate, challenges the stalwarts of Christianity so much so that he became the biggest stumbling block for the Christianity of the world, for the Christian missionary. One man alone, Sheikh Ahmad Didat, with the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he challenged the whole of Christianity. Let's analyze this goal setting. Number one, the Islamic. I. Was it Islamic? Was it according to Quran and Sahih Hadith? Was it for Allah and His Rasul? But naturally it was. That's the reason he was able to achieve his goal. Number two, was it specific? Yes. His goal was specific. I want to reply to the allegations against Islam. Specific. I want to give a fitting reply. Remove the misconceptions about Islam that is there in the mind of the non-Muslim. Number three, was it lucrative? Was it profitable? He wanted profit in Akhira. And inshallah, inshallah, Allah will grant him Jannah, inshallah. But besides being profitable in the Akhira, it even profited him here. You know, a number six standard past man, in 1986, he gets the biggest award in the Muslim world. He is awarded the King Faisal Award for service in humanity. A six standard man. He didn't do for the award. Maybe he got $200,000. He didn't do it for that. Maybe for the gold. King Faisal Award. He didn't do it for that. He did for Allah and his Rasul. Allah profits him in Akhirah and even in this world. Lucrative. A. Was it apt? Was it appropriate? Very apt. At the right time. His style, everything at that time. When the Christian missionaries were hammering the Muslims. Our morale was at the lowest. This man, Sheikh Ahmad Didad, he inspired thousands of youngsters, including myself. We could at least raise our head and stand. Act. M. Was it measurable? Yes. What did he do? He collected the books of Christianity, the Christian missionaries who wrote against Islam. You know, John Gilchrist, all these books, Jimmy Swaggart, and started replying. When they attacked the Quran and Islam, he replied and he studied their scripture, Bible, used the words of the Quran and implemented on them and he found results measurable. I. What was his intention? His intention wasn't to become famous. His intention wasn't to win the King Faisal Award. His intention was to please Allah and His Rasul. C. Was he consistent? Yes, he was. Imagine, he struggled and strived for 40 years. And if you know his history, his office was a small, dungy place. And he tells us that even to print a black and white pamphlet, a thousand quantity, they used to have a meeting. Let's have a meeting. Can we print thousand quantity of a black and white pamphlet? Marshal. Consistent. Kept on striving. Till he reached his goal. Wow. Um, it looks like he was a, he was a tough guy, huh? And uh, I didn't know like he left, he, was, he went to South Africa or something. 
someone actually mentioned in the comments. Oh really? Wow, that's really amazing. And he left India when he was in number six. Yeah. Which is a really really um it's get what get what? Yeah, primary six or something like that. Wow, that's really amazing. And then he came out to be the most uh, maybe popular person when it comes to debates and also uh, serving Allah or something like that. I mean, such an amazing thing to uh, to listen to at this time of age or something like that. I think he was a judging from his uh, his videos he was a really nice guy. He was a really good guy. And was really good at debating. What do you think? First, you have to look at the fact that this guy is coming from a not so well to do family. Mm -hmm. So you're forced to move from your country to another place where you think maybe you can improve your situation. So already he has a humble beginning. What? So he's humble, that's why maybe his teachings are so if you watched his videos, his teachings are just like you're already drawn in. Yeah. He's got charisma. He's humble, the way he just gives his information is just nice. Yeah. Then those also speaking on what how he was being treated by this Christian person. Yeah. It's all sad that in the world you have to believe to someone because of what they believe in. Yeah. That's that's not right. It will never be right. But then he grew up studying these religions, and to him he thought, I think Islam is is uh, this and that. I think there was that. an urge of him because they were. Why were they saying that Islam is a bad religion? So, you know when someone can tell you this is bad, so you want to find out why are they saying that? He actually used the word useless, yes. Yeah. So he looked into that and found out, oh, no, it's actually not useless. Mm -hmm. And he found reasons for why. Reasons why. But then, we're still in this world where we separate ourselves. Mm -hmm. Muslims, Christians, why are we doing that? Why should we sit down and say the other country, oh, the other um, religion is better than the other one. We have things to learn from each other. Yeah. But this was nice. I need to get more insight on how he started yeah. out and how he defended himself. Believe in what you want to believe in, believe in what you want to believe in. But if there's one common understanding we can learn from each other, that's the most important thing. Let's find the truth and let's find the truth here and let's work with the truth. Let's believe in the truth. You get it? Let's believe in one God or Allah, and that's it. You get it. Anyway, guys, if you feel like you react to this video in a better way, give us a thumbs up. And don't forget to go down in our comment section, tell us exactly what you feel about our reaction, and what you feel about this video right here. Who is Ahmed the Dad? Such an amazing video. Just let us know in the comment section what do you think? Who, what do you think about Ahmed the Dad? Just let us know. And the most important thing, guys, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. The more you keep on subscribing, the more you give us the motivation to do a lot of videos and to give you a better, better content. Last but not the least, we're going to see you in the next video and peace out.